Colorado is now known for being one of the top outdoor spots in the country from all of the hiking, skiing, and biking that you can do here. An amazing spot. But let's not forget what Colorado started out as, the Wild West. Stay tuned, we're gonna be talking about equestrian properties. Welcome back to the channel. I am Joe. This is Living in Colorado. I'm a broker with Great Life Colorado EXP Realty. If this is your first time here, please hit that like and subscribe button. We put out new content every week talking about all of the amazing things here to do and places to live right here on the Colorado Front Range. Now, if you are looking for a small acreage or equestrian property here in Colorado, there's a number of things that you should take into consideration. First and foremost is where are you looking and what type of property or what are you going to be using that property for? So if you're just looking for a small acreage somewhere, there is plenty of opportunities up in the mountains that you could get within probably 30 to 40 minutes of Denver. But be prepared to pay a steep price for it. Right now, acreages are absolutely at a premium. Colorado has experienced such explosive growth that these one to five acre lots are really just way more expensive than they used to be. For example, a property that was purchased up in the Pine, Colorado area, which is gonna be about 30 to 35 minutes from C470 or back in the little tent in 2015 was going around 500,000. Today, that same property for about four and a half, five acres is 1.2 million. So if you're looking for a property that has some acreage, be prepared because it's definitely gonna cost you. Additionally, if you are looking for a property up in the mountains, one thing you're gonna need to know is, is the land even usable? There's a lot of properties that are up in the foothills of Colorado that have some decent acreage, but when you get up there and you actually look at them, they're on such steep inclines that they're really not usable for anything other than saying that you have a little bit of land. And at that point, really the only benefit is you have a little space between your neighbors and you can kind of have your personal space and say that you're a big landowner here in Colorado, but it doesn't gain you anything because the land itself is not useful. Now, it's really nice if you're up on the precipice of a cliff or at the top of a mountain and you have a really great view, but as far as useful land, not necessarily gonna get you much. Now, when we're talking about property up in the mountains, there are two things that you really need to consider. First is obviously the terrain and how you're going to be able to turn that into some sort of equine pasture based on just its overall topography. But the second, and I would argue more important thing, is what is your source of water? Probably 95% of all properties up in the Colorado foothills are on a well. Wells are regulated by the state of Colorado for residential use and commercial use and agricultural use. So depending on what type of permit that you have for that well determines on what you can do with that water. The nice thing is well water is great water and if you have a strong well you can have more than what you need. But there are a lot of properties up in Colorado's foothills where either the well is just in a spot where it doesn't hit the water table or it has run dry and people have to haul water into their property. Now if you're someone with horses you know they drink a lot of water so that is definitely consideration if you're going to have to haul water. Test the well make sure it's nice and strong and also check to make sure that you're allowed to use that well water for specific purposes the next thing that you're going to want to consider is your entrance and egress routes the mountains have very narrow dirt steep roads and just think about if you needed to can you even get a horse trailer up and out of there in the summer in the winter when it's wet when it's dry not something that's a deal killer necessarily but if you have animals and you care about them, you have all of this equipment to take care of them, truck, trailer, tractors, whatever, you wanna make sure that you're able to actually access your property. I've seen this a couple of times where people have bought a perfect property, but then the incline to their driveway is so steep that they have to park at the base of the hill and walk everything up. Not ideal. All right, so we've talked about in the mountains and there's a thousand more factors about mountain living we can talk about as well. But what about just getting a nice little small country acreage right here on the front range of Colorado, just like this one I'm standing in. What about that? So what we're seeing now is a lot of the places that used to be farm and ranch land and areas that would have some acreages have been overtaken by master built communities. There's been such explosive growth along the I-25 corridor from really down into Colorado Springs all the way up to Fort Collins that most of the places that had a lot of land surrounding them just don't anymore. The result of all of this building is kind of twofold. One, there's a lot more access to all of the creature comforts that we've come to love and adore. You've got more restaurants, more places to shop, more things to do. So that's the plus. The downside is all of the open land is being developed, meaning small acreages have definitely become a 
premium product. So you're starting to see the value on these properties go through the roof. So just like a lot of places in Colorado, the prices have nearly doubled. So just be prepared that what you can get for a small acreage versus what you can buy just with a regular house. Now, something else you're gonna wanna consider is Colorado has a lot of hail. You can even see the dark clouds above me. It might get a little spicy this afternoon with the weather. And when the hail comes, where are your horses going to stay? So when you're talking about finding an acreage, does it already have a barn? Does it already have something that you can use as a shelter, even if it's a lean-to? What direction is that facing? Depending on where you're at, in most cases, you're gonna be wanting to find a spot that has a east or a southeast facing opening, if it's an open shelter, so that those cold north winds that are happening in the winter aren't gonna be blowing straight into your animal's shelter. Additionally, let's talk about keeping your animals fed. So right now, got plenty of green grass on the ground, but this has been an abnormally wet spring and early summer. So usually you're gonna see quite a bit more dirt and dried up grass. So you're gonna need to buy a lot of hay. Where are you gonna store that hay? And in this case, uh, I'm lucky. I've got a pretty big structure here so I can store all of my hay inside my barn. But that's something to consider is just like keeping your animals out of the weather, you're also going to wanna keep your hay nice and dry so it doesn't mold. And if you're a horse person, you already know this. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. You might be able to get the best of both worlds. So oftentimes when people are looking for acreages, they're basically gonna be buying a chunk of an old farm or something like that with an old farmhouse and a little bit of land. But there are quite a few communities, especially here along the Colorado Front Range that are purpose built acreages. And what I mean by purpose built acreages is they're not just an old farm that got sold off or whatnot. They're neighborhoods that were specifically designed with lots that are between one, five, eight acres, something like that. And in a lot of cases, they're perfect for exactly what I'm talking about here. They've got enough acreage to put a couple of horses. They are supported by the city or county for all of their services. And the best part is, is you still live in a little bit of a neighborhood environment. So you have a kind of the best of both worlds. You get that neighborhood feel. So if you want to have some neighbors over, you can, but yet you also have your own land and your own space and your own area for your animals. Now, when you're looking at neighborhoods like this, that are going to be your small uh, hobby ranch or small acreage communities, usually they're going to have, like I said, between two and three acres, sometimes upwards to six or eight, depending on how big it is. Price is definitely a factor because these are now being surrounded by communities that have got hundreds of homes on all sides from old farms that got sold and developed by uh, master build community folks. But the thing that I'm trying to get to here is they're all going to usually have some sort of homeowners association. Not necessarily a bad thing, but these HOAs usually have covenants and rules that will determine A, if you're allowed to have an animal, B, how many, and C, what your maintenance requirements are. Some communities have a limitation on how many large animals you can have. For example, the one that I'm on right now says that I'm allowed to have two horses or three large animals in general. But bottom line is they have a restriction on how many things you have here. Additionally, most of the time they're gonna have some sort of specification in the rules that says no commercial livestock. So you're not gonna be raising cattle to sell at market or running your own mini dairy or running a breeding facility or things like that. It's basically you're using this for your own ability to have your animals at home, essentially as companion animals or competition animals, whatever you do with it, but it's for a personal purpose, not for a commercial one. Now, additionally, and I think this is for good measure, most of these homeowners associations are gonna have specifications on what you need to do with waste. Now, what I've seen in the past through a lot of these communities I've helped uh, my clients get into is there's kind of three options. One, the HOA will require you to have a dumpster that's regularly empty, or you're allowed to do a mulching or compost type of situation as long as you do it in a prescribed manner that actually gets rid of the waste. What you're usually not allowed to do is just leave the poop on the ground or the manure on the ground and not do anything at all with it. Now this one here for my next point is usually not one that's a huge deal until it is. What type of footing or soil does the ground have? So when we were talking earlier about having a small acreage up in the mountains, I would say probably eight out of 10 times, you're gonna find the ground to be made of some sort of decomposed granite just because it's up in the mountains and that's what it is. And that drains really, really well, allowing the 
the water to go into the ground and you don't get a lot of mud or things like that. Now what we see along the front range of the Colorado Rockies is we have a lot of clay and bentonite and a lot of really soft clay-like soils. When it gets wet, you get this mud from hell <laughs> and it stays muddy and slippery for a long time. So that's not really a deal killer or anything like that. But the reason I bring it up is when you're building your paddocks or building your, your barn or just setting everything up, you need to have a good drainage plan because if you don't, you're gonna be dealing with knee high muck and your horses are gonna be miserable. You're gonna have hoof problems, all that type of stuff. Best just have a good drainage plan before you even really start building a structure. Last but not least, let's talk about vet care. Are you the type of horse owner or animal owner that is going to be trailering your animal to the vet or are you gonna have the mobile vet come to you? Either is a good option and I support both, but just be aware of where you're at. If you do have an emergency, make sure you have a good plan for how to A, get your animal out of there, or B, get that mobile vet up to you and make sure you're accessible. Now I have to say, it is still like the Wild West in some ways. Having your animals at home and having your horses with you is just an absolutely wonderful experience. The best part is you're avoiding all of the negatives of horse ownership in a lot of ways. You don't have to pay a boarding facility. You don't have to make a special trip out to go see your animals. And they're here whenever you wanna go say hi to them and feed them a carrot. Of course, there's a few extra chores keeping up with fences and mucking stalls and whatnot. But I think in the end, it's worth it. Because when you can just come out here and say hi to your buddy whenever you want, this here's Smokey, he's my buddy. It's just a really awesome experience. And it kind of takes some of the heartache out of being a horse owner and really just puts everything in perspective, makes your life a lot easier. Now, if you are looking to purchase a horse property in the Colorado area, let me know. Not all of these properties are exactly the same. They're hard to compare and there's a lot that goes into it. So as you start that search, first and foremost, make sure you're not just working with some downtown realtor who does really well at regular residential properties because most of the time they don't know anything about horse properties, what to look for, things that could be a factor or anything like that. You're absolutely going to want to work with someone who is a small acreage expert and specializes in equine properties. I would love to be that person for you. So if you you are looking for a property anywhere along the front range that is a equine property or small acreage, let me know. Send me a message at greatlifecolorado.com or call me right there on my phone number and I'd be happy to help you. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Keep watching us here at Living in Colorado. Like I said, we put out new content every single week about everything fun going on here in the state and all sorts of real estate news and tips. Hit that subscribe button and keep enjoying your life wherever you are or right here in Colorado. See ya. Yeah.